So now come before we know the abnormal, we need to know what is the normal. So here is basically a diagrammatic representation of the reproductive system of a woman. So the mouth of the uterus, so you can see the uterus down here. So the mouth of the uterus, which is about three to four centimeters in a lady, is called as cervix, which is the mouth of the uterus, is called the cervix. So the proportion is going to be a two is to one. If the uterus is two, then the cervix, the cervical length is going to be one. That is going to be the proportion. And this, this is the cervix which can be visualized through the vagina. So if I put a speculum, if I put an instrument into the vagina to open up the walls of the vagina, then the circular structure, the tubular structure that I will be seeing through the vagina will be the cervix. So as you're seeing, the cervix is interconnected to the uterus. The uterus has two arms, which is the tubes, and then they are touching the ovaries. So this is the female reproductive system. So now we were talking about this HPV virus to, un to just to have a knowledge about it. What is HPV virus? It's nothing but human papilloma virus. There are different strains. As you see, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58 are high-risk cancers. And 6 to 11 type of HPV viruses can cause genital warts or anal warts. Now, what are these numbers? Like, you know, like during your corona waves, you gave them their names, you no know, Delta, Omicron, that, this and all that. The same way these HPV, human papilloma virus, they are given, the substrains are given these names for their identification. Now, how is this HPV, uh, how does this HPV infection occur? It occurs through sexual transmission by intercourse or from mother to child and by fomites. It is found that in every 10 women, 8 women might have a HPV infection in their lifetime. So please understand, infection does not mean cancer. Okay. So you a person can be HPV infected, which is the first stage and may or may not develop into cervical cancer. So all HPV infections will develop into cervical cancer? No. Not all infections, if your body's immunity is good, if the, if the HPV vaccination, if the HPV are vaccinated, if at all it is not of a very serious strain, then and your lifestyle is good, your immunity is good, you may not progress into a worse stages. So, but in 10 women, at least 8 women are initially infected with HPV. So, if you see here the course of infection, from a normal infection, when there is an infection, when a lady comes across an infection, and if it continues to be there, then infection because of the body's immunity, because of your uh, soldiers of your body, your white blood cells, and other cells in your body which fight these infections, if they clear out the infection, then nothing will happen. But if the body's immunity is low, and you have other coexisting factors along with it, that further I will discuss. So such sort of cases, it may progress to HPV infection and that may progress to a precancerous stage and then may progress into a cancerous stage. So first the infection, then if the body's immunity is not great, if there are some coexisting factors, then it will progress to a precancerous lesion, which may further progress into a invasive cancer. But after HPV infection progresses, there can be regression or even before it uh, persistence is there, it may, the infection may clear also. So acute HPV infection takes about 5 to 10 years to develop cancer from time of infection. So somebody is infected with HPV, so the timeline taken is almost from 5 to 10 years to form a cancer. It infects, it infects only the epithelium, so there is no viremia. Viremia in the sense, the, the virus is not spread all over the body. It is just in one localized place, that is the vaginal, the cervical epithelium. And in most of the cases, there is no histologic or cytologic changes. So in most of the cases, during this period of transition, that is that 5 to 10 years of period, even if we are doing a histologic test, if we are studying your cells also, about 66 to 90% of the time, we don't even get to know that there is a 
infection. Now I told you that there are other cofactors also which will aggravate the spread of this HPV infection. First thing is hormonal contraceptive. If somebody is using for spacing, birth spacing or birth control for more than 5 to 9 years, then there is threefold risk of HPV infection uh, progressing to cancer. And if somebody is using for more than 10 years, then there is fourfold risk of HPV infection progressing to cancer. Other sexually transmitted diseases when they are coexisting like chlamydia and trachomatis, herpes simplex virus variety 2. If there is a initiation of sexual activity at a very young age, if, if somebody is predisposed to high parity, many kids, some, a lady is given birth to many no, more than four times of birth, then if existing HIV infection, immunosuppression, if you're already on some immunosuppressant drugs, tobacco, smoking, both active and passive, you're directly smoking or you are with the person who is smoking continuously, you're inhaling the smoke, multiple sex partners and low socioeconomic status. Why low socioeconomic status? Because the diet is poor with antioxidants. However, the main reason women get HPV is through sexual contact. All these reasons are factors that will cause the progression of HPV infection quickly to cancer. Okay. So in India, about 200 women die each day due to cervical cancer. That is why this awareness is for we are a little aggressive in um, educating the community against cervical cancer. So here is just a pictorial representation of a normal uh, uterus with cervix and an early stage, later on stage 1B and 2B where the infection has spread to the cervix and outside the cervix also. So if you see the data here, the current data, is India is uh, contributing up to 27% of new cervical cancer cases to the world. Whereas rest of the world is at 73%, we are almost contributing more than one-fourth number of people of cervical cancer, newly detected cervical cancer cases every year. And deaths due to cervical cancer is also around the same proportion, about 27% compared to uh, the entire world, which stays at 73%. If you see here the bar graph which represents all other cancers in the women uh, like um, skin cancer, brain cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, stomach cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer. But the cancer of the uterus is, is more prevailing than all other cancers in women in India. So what are the symptoms that one can experience if at all they have the cervical cancer which has the HPV infection has progressed down to cervical cancer. Vaginal discharge continuously in spite of treatment. There's a foul smelling thick discharge. Repeated vaginitis that is a vaginal infection and urinary tract infection. There is a post coital bleed. This is one of the commonest symptoms that people come to the OPD that is bleeding after sex, post-coital bleeding. There's a no healing, non-healing or a recurrent cervical erosion. Erosions are something like ulcers in the mouth of the uterus, that is the cervix. Irregular or intermenstrual bleeding, especially in the premenopausal phase. Now, how do we do the screening? Uh, in whom we do the cancer screening? If there is chronic pain, if there is distension, if there is loss of weight, Heavy bleeding, prolonged bleeding from the menopausal age. Postmenopausal bleeding after the menopause, after the uh, stopping, stopping of the menstrual cycle, if there is bleeding, if there is any growth in the mouth of the uterus, and if there is a tumor before the menopausal age. So this is what we spoke about the age group where uh, we definitely see some symptoms. Like I told you, it is the the progression of HPV to cancer takes about 10 years. So it is mostly the disease of a later age group, like, you know, after the menopausal age group or somebody after 45, 50, 55, 60 years, 
we are seeing it quite commonly and very rarely in the reproductive age group. So I just told you about uh, what are the symptoms one can see if at all they are infected with this HPV virus and it has progressed to cancer. Now, even before all, we have very you've heard this famous uh, line that says prevention is better than cure. So now is it possible to get protection against this cervical cancer? Yes. It can be virtually prevented by two phases. One is early vaccination. So first thing is prevention. Second thing is screening. And second thing by the screening strategies, which includes history and diagnostic tests. So I told you primary prevention, the rule for all vaccination. So vaccination, vaccination and vaccination. Secondary prevention in people who have already taken vaccination. Now, don't be under the impression that I have taken my uh, shots of cervical cancer prevention vaccination, but I don't need the screening. No, it's absolutely a myth. People who have taken all doses very regularly, all the cervical cancer vaccinations also should be subjected to secondary prevention because not all cancers are, not all strains of HPV cancers the vaccination gives protection against. There may be new strains. There may be a mutation. So secondary prevention is second thumb rule. So under that, we have some we have some tests for HPV screening, pap smear, visual inspection, visual inspection with acetic acid and with visual inspection with leucose iodine. Now, first in screening test is the HPV test, which is a very accurate way of telling if the HIV risk or if the high risk of HPV is present in the women's cervix or not. This test can use the sample that is taken for pap smear test as well. A positive test result means a woman has a high risk of HPV. So, but a positive HPV test does not mean that the lady has got cancer. Left alone, it may progress. With all the cofactors, it may progress, but... Only with detection of HPV doesn't mean the lady has got cancer. The next method by scre for screening is pap smear. So what is a pap smear? It is nothing but just taking a smear of cells of the, of the mouth of the uterus, which is the cervix through a spatula and to send it for histopathological examinations. So why a pap smear is very important to detect any precancerous and invasive cancer cervix in early stages. Positive screeners can also be selected for other selective tests and management. With treatment, progression of the disease can be stopped. Thus, morbidity associated with advanced cancer decreases. Whereas mortality, though there, reduces by 20 to 60 percent. And it helps us to study the natural history of the disease. If pap smear is abnormal, and I told you, you'll be subjected to further tests, which is known as colposcopy, which is closely examining the cervix with a colposcope, which is a magnifying uh, instrument, along with it, taking a small biopsy of an abnormal place of the cervix as well is done. So these are some precancerous lesions. These are not cancer per se, but precancerous. Uh, so here we are seeing about Cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, which is seen on colposcopy. These are the photographs of some abnormal cervix where we can see ulceration, growth, and everything, which are type 1, type 2, and type 3. After this, the progression into cervical cancer, stage 1, stage 2, progresses. Now, I told you vaccination is the primary prevention. We have two types of vaccinations available in the market. One is Gardasil and one is Cervarix. Cervarix gives you only protection against two strains of viruses, but they have high virulence, that is 16 and 18. However, Gardasil quadrivalent here that I'm talking is about four vaccines, 6, 11, 16 and 18. However, the latest vaccination that's come into the market is Gardasil 9 that gives you protection against nine strains of viruses. So when we are just comparing both, 
in what conditions would I indicate somebody to take this vaccinations compulsorily with any history of cervical cancers, cancers in the family or any other cancers in the family, vulvar, vaginal, precancers, cervical dysplasia, abnormal cervix, genital warts. So, and cervix is only indicated in cervical cancer. So, Gardasil in all other cancer and cervix only in cervical cancer. What is the, the efficacy of Gardasil is 98 to 100%, whereas cervix is only 92 to 94%. So now the question, when we can take this vaccination, we can give this vaccination to any girl who is above 9 years of recommended age to 45 years of age group. So anybody falling between 9 to 45 years are recommended to take this vaccination. However, the most effective time to vaccinate girls and young women is before they become sexually active. Active. So I told you this HPV virus spreads by sexual activity. So it is better to vaccinate our girls before they are sexually active. So how many doses are recommended? Three doses of Gardasil is recommended. Zero, second and sixth month. So first zeroth month and then the second month and from the sixth month. So sixth month from the zeroth month. Okay. So three doses are currently recommended. What are the side effects of HPV vaccine? Nothing much. Very common are erythema, pain and swelling. Uh, less common are pruritus that is itching. Along with it, there some people may also experience mild fever, body pains, um, dizziness, nausea and fainting episodes very 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 rare so only at the injection site there's going to be some uh, reddishness pain swelling and itching so in special population in pregnant women uh, because of insufficient trial we don't recommend this in the pregnancy and if at all a woman gets pregnant after her first dose of vaccination it's better she takes it after she delivers lactating women yes can take this vaccination no Gardasil, Gardasil can be taken, no cervix during lactation. So is the vaccine costly? So uh, and all, just one information for all of you. So the cost of Gardasil 9, which is presently available in the market, costs you about 10,000 rupees per vaccination. So you're going to take 0, 2 and 6. So that you're going to take 3 doses of uh, the vaccination that is available when you put the three together yes you're spending about 30,000 which I definitely uh, don't feel is a huge cost when we see the cost of treatment of cervical cancer alone whether it can be a diagnostic test with colposcopy or with a scan with MRI with CT scan with PET scan and then chemotherapy radiotherapy surgeries when you see all this, I don't see that this 30,000 is a huge amount when it's compared to all those modalities of screening, first thing. And the second thing is, you have a treatment, you have a vaccination to prevent a cancer, whereas I don't think any other cancers, we give vaccination to prevent a cancer, but this cancer, we definitely have a preventive vaccination. Second thing, and the third thing is with the modern lifestyle of people, I, uh, a vaccination cost, I don't think it is something to be worried about. And uh, lack of rupees of dowry is given to your daughters. So please first vaccinate them. So when you put all these points together, then definitely it is cost effective. I will definitely say to all my patients that it is giving you protection against nine types of HPV viruses. Uh, just give 1000 for one virus so by that way you will be completely vaccinated against nine different types of hpv viruses so for you and your daughter a wonderful gift guard yourself means to protect yourself to prevent cervical cancer so yesterday we all celebrated the national girl child day i saw statuses of a lot of my friends and my known people uh, putting the status of themselves with their daughter and and telling how blessed they are. So yes, if you definitely feel that you are blessed to have a daughter, then bless her also with cervical cancer vaccinations. And if you are one among that special 
a special one to your mom, to your dad, then please you yourself consult your doctor or you can come and meet me and take this cervical cancer vaccination. Thank you.